Okay, so we've had a, a number of requests to create a quick demo video to show you how to configure your own quick capture projects. Now, in this particular example, I'm going to show you a very simple pothole collection project, enabling users to drive along the freeway and collect the location and the size of any pothole that they come across. As a starting point, I've created a feature class um, called potholes. And I've also created a domain for all the different pothole categories or sizes, so large and small. I then applied that domain to the size field and then symbolized on that domain of large and small. Then the next thing was to publish the data or feature class as a feature service. And really, it's up to you uh, where you do this. You can do this in ArcMap or, of course, ArcGIS Pro. Um, and also, you can actually use your own existing feature services within Quick Capture as well. You just need to make sure that they've been configured with the appropriate uh, editing permissions so that we can actually submit features to it. Um, and it also makes sense to update the description and metadata for the service as well. So when ready, we'll go through and publish the feature service and then open it up on ArcGIS Online so we can continue with editing it. Okay, so that's all good to go. Let's go to ArcGIS Online and do a quick refresh. Okay, here we are. And the first thing that I recommend you do is to actually create a feature service view repre representation of the underlying feature service. This means that you can make all your edits and changes to the actual feature service view. Um, and in effect, you can have multiple views pointing to that same feature service. Um, so you can have multiple representations and ultimately multiple uh, quick capture projects. Let's click OK. One thing to be mindful of is that you need to ensure that the feature service view has editing capabilities enabled as well. By default on creation, um, feature service views are read only. OK, so within the settings, just scroll down and there's an option here for enabling editing. Click Save and then you'll be able to edit this view just like you could the underlying feature service. The other thing that I recommend is that we go through at the earliest opportunity and provide a thumbnail uh, for the item and, and this will be viewable within the quick capture table of content. So this makes things look a little bit more attractive. And the most important thing that we need to do is update the tag of the feature service review with quick capture. Now this tag is what the application will use to scan your portal and pull through any services or views as quick capture projects. Now with that done, you can sign into your app, uh, do a refresh based on uh, the user logged into the organization and the services um, that are shared with them. And then you will see that all of these items are effectively tagged with the quick capture tag. Um, this is the service that I've just published. Clicking on it will download it to the device. Um, and you'll see that the app has read the information in the existing feature templates and pretty much straight out of the box, we can start collecting features and then submitting them. Now the, the cool thing about feature templates is that we can actually override them. So if we wanna um, change how these buttons are displayed or actually add in new buttons, then we can actually go back into ArcGIS Online and make those edits uh, to the templates there and then save them to the feature service. And then Quick Capture will actually basically reread the information in the feature service and then update the project accordingly. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, if you open up the feature service view, within the map viewer, there is actually the option to go in and edit the templates. 
Okay, click edit and then go down to manage. And now we're able to manage the feature templates and update them, rename them, uh, change the symbology, etc. So in this example, we've got the ability to record large and small potholes, but I also want to uh, record whether or not they're on the left or the right hand side of the road. So to do this, if we go into properties, um, what we can do is actually update the name of the template, which was what's going to be displayed on the button. So I want this to be a large pothole on the left hand side of the road. We're already writing the size to the, the size attributes, but we also want the template to write the side of the road to the, the feature as well on collection. So we'll update the attribute there. Then if we copy the template, we can create a duplicate, but in this case, it's gonna be a large pothole on the right hand side of the road. And accordingly, we'll need to update the attribute to be updated with right as opposed to left. And then we can repeat the exercise for small. This is going to be a small on the left. Try typing. And that will be left as an attribute. And once more we'll copy. This is going to be small right and then we'll update it to submit right uh, as part of that feature. And of course we can update the name uh, of the group as well. So we can call this large potholes. And this group can be called small potholes. And we're also able to update the symbology used as well um, by, for example, picking one of the basic shapes and in this case we'll make the, we'll select a, a circular shape so that we can have a circular button and then we will keep the fill as yellow and I'll update the symbology again to get a circular button, keeping that as orange. So let's click done, let's save our changes, and then jump back into Quick Capture and do a refresh. Quick Capture is clever and it knows whether we've made an update to the feature service um, and it prompts us to re-download the project so that we can see any changes that have actually been made. And you'll see that now we've got those additional buttons and they've been made round. So things are looking a little bit more attractive now. Uh, another thing that we can do is actually not use round, square buttons, etc. We can actually um, use images. So I've got uh, a URL to a picture of a big pothole. If I jump in and modify the properties, you can see you've got the option to use a symbol. If I paste in the URL and add it, and then bump up the size, we can then apply that image as our symbol instead of an actual um, shape and color. Likewise, for small, we'll modify properties once more, use an image, paste it in, add it, and then we'll bump up the symbol size again. We'll save the changes, and then we'll jump back into Quick Capture and do another refresh. Okay, there we are. Okay, so now we've got the images, large potholes, small potholes. Okay, so what else can we do? Well, 
you look at the documentation, there is a thing called a template variable. Now template variables are effectively unique strings that we use to, to basically indicate that for a particular field, we want to update or provide a value coming from essentially the device. So for example, if you wanted to submit a feature and you wanted it to be populated or certain fields to be populated with the latitude, longitude, um, maybe the speed you're traveling, the direction you're heading, then we'd use one of these variables. So in this case, I'm just going to grab the direction variable um, and show you what you need to do if you want to have, in this case, the direction automatically written to the feature on collection. I should say automatically, this depends on whether or not the device supports it, but if the device supports it and it reports a heading, then pasting this unique string into the field that you want to update will populate it with the heading um, on submission or collection of the, uh, of the feature. So let's go into properties. We'll do it for each of the templates. Um, there we go. Click done, and then we would save our changes. There are additional variables. Um, you can also, for example, insert uh, the username of the person logged in. Uh, and you can also record or insert the start date um, and end date as well by inserting a unique date stamp into the feature template as well. So we're going to go in and just do another update to, to capture the username just to give you an example and we'll do it for these features and then for a start time we'll grab the unique date which is the uh, Apollo 11 launching I believe and then we would go into properties and update the, the values for those particular fields. Save changes, and then when we submit a feature, those values will be automatically updated. We have a date, a username coming from the device. The other thing that you should be aware of beyond parameters are, well, beyond variables, I should say, are parameters. Now, parameters are just ways that Quick capture um, changes the way buttons are, are displayed, for example, or, or how they're organized in the form. And you can apply them at the item level, i.e., to the, the view item, or you can apply them to the individual templates. Now, the first thing that we'll look at is configuration parameters at the item level. So these are things like uh, the number of columns your buttons are spread over, the spacing of the column. Uh, the background color that you want to use at the application uh, for the app and also whether or not you want to include or show a, a map all the time. And really it's just a matter of grabbing the template, the, or sorry, the parat parameter you want and going back to the actual view item and then it's a, a little unusual in terms of the the actual um, setting that you update on the item um, but this this one tends to be not used for, for other things so if you go down to the the credit attribution and then for parameters you always need to put a double uh, forward slash in front of the parameters that you put in and you would then put the parameter and the number, for example. So just to show you this working, I'll change the number of columns to be, in this case, one. If you wanted to add in another parameter, then you just put a comma followed by the parameter uh, pair. Um, we'll just click Save. And then we'll have a look at what that looks like in the application. Probably not going to look wonderful, um, but just to, to show you 
how to, to make these updates. Okay, so now we've got pretty large buttons, but they're all arranged over a single column as opposed to two. Um, it's pretty much uh, not the most attractive thing, so I'm going to actually go back and revert that change. The other place that we can apply parameters are to the actual templates. So in the help, there's a section called button configuration parameters template level. And in this case, we're writing it into the description of the template. So you can use these parameters to change or override the default colors uh, of the buttons, uh, outlines, widths, even the text. And you can also, for polylines and polygons, change the behavior of how buttons work. Um, this is especially around uh, mutual exclusiv exclusivity, i.e. where one template stops, another one um, starts, or, or the other way around. Um, but the other thing that you can control is um, the ability to capture photos for, for point features. Um, and this is an example that I'll, I'll show you now. If you grab the parameter that you want and return to the map so that we can start editing those feature templates again, um, I'll show you how you can update the description and ensure that those parameters are applied. Okay, so back into edit, back into manage, and for the individual feature templates, we would do or insert the two forward slashes followed by the tag. And I'm just going to apply this to the top two large buttons. And what Quick Capture will do is it will read the parameter and then on load, it will basically mean that the capturing of a large pot hole in this case will also include the capturing of a photo at the same time. So you can submit a feature with a corresponding attachment and then you can submit that to the feature service. So let's do a refresh one more back into the table of contents. So click on it to download the latest version. And you can see that we've got this photo icon applied. And this basically means that the camera will be running all the time when you've got the, the um, parameter applied to a template in the project. And then clicking the button will capture the feature and also an image at the same time. Okay, so hopefully this has given you a good overview of how to get your quick capture project uh, up and running. Um, definitely advise you to check out the help, um, feedback to us with any issues or questions you have, and likewise if you need any clarification on any point. So yeah, thank you very much for your time.